am I the jerk for breaking up my engagement because my fiance isn't traditional enough? This was originally posted on the 3rd of March, 2024, just two weeks ago at the time of recording. A little background. I am a 26 year old woman and I come from a relatively traditional Asian family. So sorry in advance for the bad English. My father owns a rice wine brewery and my mother helps him with it. Even though I said my family is pretty much conservative, from what I've seen growing up, my father never told my mother to do all the chores and he helps her with them. My father always says that he couldn't provide for the family alone and she has to work. That's why he never expects her to do everything in the house. Just like how they share the responsibilities to earn for our family, they also share responsibilities taking care of the household. Now, enter my fiance, a 29 year old man. We met on social media. He is an American who is currently working in my country. We've been dating for three years and have been engaged for five months. He always tells me he's looking for a traditional woman and wants to date with marriage in mind. He said that women who are able to take care of a household and a child rearing are admirable. And I always agreed with him without much thought because that is indeed an incredible feat, right? Well, he's working in a small university and I'm currently working in hospital. We saved enough to buy a house with a little bit of help from my parents, but we haven't moved in together yet because, you know, Asian parents. But anyway, on my father's birthday last week, we talked about marriage once again. He doesn't think his income alone would be enough after our marriage, and it's giving him insecurities. So I suggested that I keep working after marriage, and that's not a problem because we'd be partners. My father also offered that we take over his brewery. And while I found the idea lovely, my fiance on the other hand seemed hesitant about it, but he agreed that I should keep my job. That was when the first problem started. I told him that since I have to work, then I expect he'll help with the household chores later. After I said that, he suddenly got irritated. He said that he'd been telling me he's looking for a traditional woman and that now he'd been catfished since I don't want to take care of every house chore because I'd still work anyway. Yeah, major red flags instantly. Whenever he said he's looking for a traditional spouse, I always thought that he'd also be a traditional spouse, aka being sole provider so I can focus on taking care of the house and child if we ever have any. But when I told him that, he said I'm a gold digger and materialistic like any other woman, even when I never once asked him to be a sole provider. He brought that up first. Mind you, I didn't even let him spend alone whenever we go out on a date. For example, if he paid for dinner, I paid for coffee in the movie. Even my father willingly offered his brewery if we want to take care of it as a means to provide for ourselves. So where's the gold I should have been digging here? That was when I actually put the ring down and I told him that I want to break up. I told him he's not traditional enough if he wants a fully traditional wife. I didn't want to deal with someone who could easily call me a gold digger because I want to share the chores. That hasn't even happened yet in front of my parents. I can't help but think that if he could easily say what he said in front of my parents when we haven't even married yet, then he could say something a lot worse when we're married and alone. I went home alone and he texted me saying he was sorry and didn't mean what he said. He asked me to meet, but I don't feel like it. However, when I told my friends, most of them told me I was a bit too emotional, hasty and impulsive, that I might look like a jerk because I don't even want to meet him. His mother is now trying to talk me out of it and saying that I'm too old to act like this and it's the culture barrier that's led us to this point. So here I am trying to look for a new perspective Am I in the wrong? Right, before I get into my thoughts on this, first of all, let's have a look at some relevant comments. Someone below this asks, what did your parents think? OP replies, my parents don't really speak English, so they can only understand bits and pieces of what was said. My father initially felt bad. He thought we fought because he brought up the business, but after I told them the actual reason, excluding the gold digger and materialistic remarks, they are fully on my side. And if I want to end it, then I should, they say but they think that I should at least meet him once to end our relationship properly. Someone else said, be careful when you break up with him and bring someone along. All right, thanks for your advice. My parents are coming and my father said he's not going to let me meet him alone. Thank you once again. All right, from my perspective, there's no way on earth that OP can even be close to being the jerk here, right? It's just ridiculous. To be honest, it's barely even worth me commenting on. The comments summed it up well and your fiance is clearly just a walking red flag as I mentioned during reading that. I mean, what is he even doing? He wants a traditional partner, but he's not willing to pull his side of the deal. 
Also, what tradition even is this anymore? I don't even know. It's a bit of a weird dynamic, but you know what? If that's what he wants and he's not willing to do his half of it, then he obviously doesn't deserve it. Now, good news. We have an update. Nine days later on March the 12th, we got this. First of all, I want to thank everyone who kindly replied and messaged me over the past week. I'm truly grateful for all the encouragement that I received. It really warms my heart in the midst of all of this mess. I want to admit that I too ignored quite a number of red flags that he displayed in the past few years, brushing them off as differences in our culture and upbringing. I thought I was being open-minded and accommodating, not knowing that I should have opened a deeper conversation regarding what I wanted to if I was to deepen our relationship. Many people kindly gave me praise in my previous post, but I actually feel rather undeserving to receive that because I also did so many stupid things that got me here. Okay, so now onto the real update. Last night, I had dinner with him alongside my father after much thought and input I received from Redditors, friends, and family. Long story short, he still didn't want to end our relationship. He actually apologized, saying he misspoke and wanted to fix his mistake. He said it was because he was too comfortable with me since I'm not a confrontational person. And I did help quite a lot with his chores, bringing side dishes, helping clean up his plates every now and then, etc. So he thought that I'll always be accommodating to what he wants. I also apologized, saying that I've never really brought this kind of topic up seriously. And I've never made sure we're on the same page whenever we did discuss this type of topic. He agreed that I should have told him before because that way it would never have got to this point. And then he kept bringing up my bad communication. I know it's my fault too, but it didn't feel good at all hearing that from him. Yeah, I mean, that's the definition of gaslighting there. You've like semi-apologized even though you didn't need to. And he has just jumped on that. He is taking that and he's using every last inch. Even if he'd admitted his faults and never spoke badly to me before, except for that one time, I still can't shake off my distrust of him. I don't know why, but what happened last week is like an instant feeling of repulsion so i returned the ring he gave and i told him i'll return more than half of the amount that we used to buy our house he initially refused the money saying he wants to keep trying to win back my trust and me to keep in contact with him but this morning he said i can transfer it because marriage is not really happening now and he tried to prevent me from selling the house and also isn't telling our mutual friends that marriage is off the table so i've just updated almost all of my group chats that now i'm single and i'm here to tell everyone i'm single because my now ex-fiance has a red flag that is so big china would be crying with envy i feel like a jerk to be honest because it seems like my feelings for him were that shallow all along but maybe reality hasn't hit me yet but that's that okay that is the end of the post let's jump into some comments somebody said you absolutely did the right thing what does your dad think and i personally couldn't agree more my dad is a typical japanese father so we don't talk a lot since i've grown up but he's supporting my decision to cancel the engagement he doesn't say much but he actually looks quite happy since he hasn't been into it for quite a while now thank you for the kind words i hope you and everyone around you is always kind like you are to me now it certainly makes me feel better now someone else was a little bit more scathing now let me know in the comments if you agree with this but they said you need to go to intense therapy so it doesn't happen again you apologize to a man for not being his maid objectively yeah i guess op kind of did but i think this is a little bit too harsh op replied thank you for the response i didn't apologize for not wanting to be someone's maid but for not being open and talking about what i want and expect in our relationship i read in the comments of my previous post that many people pointed out that the conversation with this topic should have happened long before and i do agree with that and that is why i apologize however i will also keep working on myself so thank you for your suggestion i'll keep it in mind wow what a polite way to, to kind of repel that question someone said you need to go to intense therapy so it doesn't happen again and op just says yeah i'm not gonna do that but thanks for your suggestion so what happened to the house someone asked did you go 50 50 why does he get more we went 45 45 and my father added the extra 10 percent my father was the one who offered to give him 50 percent of the shares as an extra layer of protection now he can't complain and has no reason to contact me or my family to catch a sea bream with shrimp, he said. Okay, so that is the first post done of this episode. Well, I say done because before we move on to the second story, I do just want to mention and bring up a couple of other comments that I've seen in the comments down below that I think are very, very interesting. Maybe along the lines perhaps of what a few of you guys might be thinking as well. 
a little bit like the other comment we saw where people are saying that OP was just way too naive and actually it was her fault that she landed herself in this situation and she could have just dealt with this and, and brought it up a lot longer ago than than she actually did so someone in the comments down below actually called op and her family spineless but op said this if you don't mind i don't have a problem with you insulting me but do not attempt to do that to my family not everything can be resolved by only being tough and formidable i don't think it's stupid knowing when to be firm and then how we compromise for our final decision to avoid future problems but I do think it's naive when one doesn't even consider that there are other ways to solve a problem other than butting heads and fighting. Stupid when they don't even try to understand the logic behind others' problem-solving method. Yeah, very fair, and I agree. She also continued to another similar scathing response, saying that that is your prerogative right to insult us, but it's also within my prerogative right to ask you to stop. This kind of exchange is called conversation in Japan. I don't know what it's called in your country. Is that another cultural difference? If someone's uncomfortable, they should suck it up or don't go and talk in the first place? Excellent. My apologies for being so ignorant. Giving him more money than he deserved guaranteed me an excuse for cutting contact completely. I've compromised my decision. Social circles run differently here because breaking up an engagement or a divorce will always be a hot topic and sometimes it affects you on an institutional level. Sometimes it'll affect your career even more when you're a woman. Yes, there are some cases where people get fired because they got divorced because it will reflect badly on the company's image. Wow, now remember guys, this is happening in Japan as OP just revealed. Sometimes some companies go as far as giving paid leave and vacation to mend their employees' married life. I'm not breaking up, I'm cancelling an engagement. It weighs differently. You are naive to think that every society works like yours and your value is applicable to every part of the world without considering their societal circumstances. I'm not excusing it, but I'm not someone so important that I can change them overnight, nor do I want to sacrifice my family and my own reputation. I'm not delusional enough to think I'm the main character. If that's still spineless to you, then sure. I hope you do as well as him navigating your life here. Well, damn, uh, OP just ate, that's for sure. <laughs> wow, what a way to just destroy a hater on Reddit. Fair play, I need to take a leaf out of her book. That was emphatic. I mean, it's obvious, but she is completely right. It is a societal difference. You know, she mentioned throughout it's it's a different country where this is happening and you can tell, but I don't think she wanted to actually reveal that it was in Japan, but she did reveal it was Japan in, in the comments down below. And I think we all know how, how society and culture is completely different in Japan than in the Western world. I mean, who knows? Maybe one of you watching right now is from Japan or at least is living in Japan. Let us know in the comments down below how is life different especially in regards to relationships because yeah the context provided by op there gives a lot more reasoning and, and makes me think or makes me understand i guess how she acted a lot more than if this had happened in the western world i think even still i think she acted fine the whole time to be fair and yeah she's absolutely right is it really necessary to just fight and have a massive argument and potentially cause yourself years of like emotional turmoil or can you just sacrifice a little bit of money in the short term and then just be done with a relationship that you don't want to be in? That is obviously the better option. So yes, get your comments in down below, but uh, that is going to do it for the first story. However, before we move on to story two in this video, I've got a little announcement for you. Well, I say announcement. I mentioned it in yesterday's episode, but I want to keep it on the down low. I don't want a lot of people knowing. I only want you, the core fan, the core watcher and listener of my channel the one that is still listening and watching right now despite the fact that we're what you know over 10 minutes into this episode to hear this if you are a fan of relationship stories and drama just like the one i've just read and the one i'm about to read then you might be interested in my brand new channel redditor extra where i cover purely reddit relationship drama stories obviously this right here is my main channel and it's not going to change but i can't cover exclusively relationship stories every single day on this despite the fact that at the moment i kind of want to i'm really enjoying them so for that reason to be able to do that i've started a brand new channel redditor extra where i'm going to do that hopefully every single day i've already posted two videos over there and by the time you're watching this the channel may well have over a thousand subscribers you guys are loving it so thank you very much for the support if you want to check it out 
It will be on the end screen of this one and also linked sneakily in the description, but nowhere else. So don't go telling people about this. I only want this to be for the core viewers, you listening to this right now. All right, let's get into story two and don't tell anyone I said that. Am I the jerk for being truthful and admitting that I find my wife unattractive after her surgery? This was originally posted on the 9th of March, 2024. My wife had plastic surgery recently. We discussed it and I was against it. It wasn't my decision and ultimately though, I had no say. She looks weird now. She had the fat sucked out of her face, lip fillers, a neck lift, other stuff I don't really get. She gives me uncanny valley vibes now. It freaks me out. She's fully healed now and she wants us to go back to normal, like me initiating sex. I have done so, but not as much as I used to. And when I do, I try and make sure there's very little light. It's been a few months and I kind of dread having to look at her. Obviously, she's noticed. She's been bugging me to tell her what's up. I've tried telling her I'm just tired from work or that I'm run down. Really anything except for the truth. She broke down and asked me if I was having an affair. I said that I wasn't. She asked to look at my phone. I unlocked it for her and handed it over. I wasn't worried about her finding anything because there's nothing to find. She spent an hour looking through it and found nothing. She asked me to explain why I changed. I tried explaining that I just wasn't that interested right now. Nothing I said was good enough for her. So she kept digging. I finally told her the truth. I wasn't harsh or brutally honest. I just told her that her new face wasn't something I found attractive and that I was turned off. She asked if that's why I turn off all the lights now. And I said yes. She started crying and said that she needed time alone. She went to stay with her sister. I've been called every name in the book since this happened. Her sister said I'm a piece of trash for insulting my wife's looks. Her friends all think I'm the jerk. I tried not to say anything. I can't force myself to find her attractive. I still love her, but her face is just weird now. She looks like the blue alien from the fifth element. Now, I have no idea what the blue alien from the fifth element is. So here's a picture. Oh my gosh. I mean, this is one of those times where if you are listening to this on a podcast platform, you should probably head over to YouTube. Or to be fair, just look up Blue Alien from Fifth Element yourself. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't really want that as a wife. But I do kind of get where OP is probably coming from. Right, let's get into some comments. OP has actually added that she isn't hideous. She just doesn't look like herself anymore. Remember when the girl from Dirty Dancing got a nose job and no one recognized her? Someone asked her, do you love her because of her looks or who she is? And OP says that love and sexual attraction are two different things. I do think that is completely fair, to be honest. You can still love someone, but be less sexually attracted to them after they do this to themselves. I kind of get it. Someone else commented, how was getting these surgeries discussed? And what did she say when you protested? She said she wanted to get this stuff done. I said I'd prefer it if she didn't. I pulled up pictures of celebrities before and after and showed her how weird they look. Meg Ryan, the girl from Glee, the girl from Lip Sync Battle, she said that she'd feel better about herself if she got it. We talked and argued about it for a year before she did it, started with lip fillers and ended with buckle fat removal. Someone else responded saying, you're shallow. But OP said, if I get a snake tattoo across my face, is she allowed to say she isn't a fan? Great point. And I wouldn't for one second say that OP is being shallow here. Someone else asked about money and age. We are both in our mid thirties, her mum gave her the money as a gift. OP finally says that ultimately he has not stopped loving his wife. He's just not attracted to her face. Now, the person who's compiled all of this stuff and posted it on r slash best of Redditor updates, where of course the majority of these stories are posted, if you didn't know that, that is where I find them on Reddit, has said that OP has responded to a lot of comments. Most of them are people who can't seem to wrap their heads around the fact that he does love her, but isn't currently attracted to her. Some bring up, well, what if she was in a car accident and needed plastic surgery? Would you hate her then? Well, she wasn't in an accident. Yeah, I mean, personally, I think that's completely fair. She has chosen to do this to herself. You said beforehand that you didn't want her to do it. And now you're less sexually attracted to her. That's fine. It doesn't change the fact that you still love her. And OP is not for one second saying that he loves her any less now. But she's changed her physical appearance that you were attracted to in the first place. Ultimately, physical appearance is a big part of attraction. I think everyone could admit that. Not saying that, you know, personality and love doesn't come into it. But it just has to be. So yeah, I think he's completely right to say, well, 
I'm less attracted to you. You've changed your appearance. I mean, I might get hate for this in the comments down below, but I would go as far to say that it's the same as if somebody, now, naturally, I'm not saying if there was any medical reason involved or whatever, say your partner put on loads and loads of weight and just got obese, I think you'd also be allowed to say, I'm less attracted to you. You've changed your physical appearance. That's a little bit more debatable. It really is. But I think that that's fair. Again, as long as it's natural and there's not a medical reason for it. Let me know in the comments down below, guys. Do you agree with that? That is contentious. It really is. But I want to hear your thoughts. Anyway, let's get into the update. This was posted three days later. My wife came home yesterday and we finally had a long talk. She told me that the reason she had the surgery was because her mum and sister talked her into it. They convinced her that she was starting to look old and that I would find someone else to be with if she didn't do something. That was why her mum gave her the money for the operations. Her mum and sister looked like Bruce Campbell in Escape from LA. Again, if you can't see this, if you're on a podcast platform or you're just not watching right now, just, yeah, imagine someone with loads of Botox and their skin is just pulled tight and it just doesn't look natural at all. I mean, personally, that goes far to say it's pretty disgusting. But um, yeah, that now is making more sense to me. If her mum and sister already looked like this and were the ones persuading her to do it, I can understand why she might have done it. Opie continues, they are the very last people on the planet that should be telling anyone to get plastic surgery. I used some of the comments I read on my post as talking points. I told her that I loved her and that she was the person that I wanted to spend my life with. I told her that the surgery would take a while longer to settle down and that as I got more used to her new face, I would learn to appreciate it. Fair enough. She asked me if I wanted her to see if she could get it reversed. I almost screamed at her. The last thing in the world I want is for her to F up her face more than it already is. I asked her if she could please just leave it and let me get used to it. Imagine that regret, by the way. Getting loads of facial surgery and then saying, oh, I actually want it reversed. Jeez. We talked for about three hours and we decided that her mum and sister would not be a part of any decisions in our life going forward. She's going to leave her face alone and give me a chance to get used to it. We're going to look for a marriage counsellor and maybe individual counsellors for each of us. I'm going to make an effort to show her every day how I still find her desirable and she is going to make an effort to believe me when I tell her that I love her the way she is. We're going to talk to her mum and sister and tell them that we're taking a break from them. We're going to block them get our stuff together before we allow them back into our lives. Thank you to everyone who tried to help me. I would like to add that I did not think that there were that many guys out there with a weird blue squid lady fetish. It isn't for me, but you do you. Oh, I understand. OP is referencing the first person he said from what, Fifth Elemental or something. I guess some people said in the comments down below that they actually quite liked that look. Uh, yeah, weird. Right, let's round things off with some comments. Someone said, many tough elements here. Her self-esteem, body dysmorphia, being influenced by her mum and sister, you losing attraction for now, which leads us to the fifth element. Oh, God. Dang, that was funny, if they do say so themselves. Glad you're making the effort and continuing to love your wife. Opie replies, I can't stop loving her. Someone else asked, did you use the movie references when talking with your wife? I did not. The closest I got was pointing out that a bad haircut and a kimono and I could pass for a skinny version of Associate Bob. And again, here is a picture. Oh, I guess OP was kind of referencing the fact that he's not the best looking, but that's not the most important thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, crazy haircut, I've got to say. Someone else said, her mum and sister will at least look shocked when you break it to them. Oh, gosh. But OP says, no, they won't. They have the facial mobility of bilateral stroke victims. Wow. Bilateral stroke victims. I might have to use that as an insult, by the way. That is phenomenal. Finally, OP has said, we're going to work at it. There's a long road ahead. I will spend the rest of my life showing her she is the woman I want. Well, there you go. Fair play, OP, is all I can say to that. Um, because ultimately, something's happened there to the person you love that you really don't like. And you're going to have to deal with that. Because ultimately, you're the one that looks at her every day. Uh, so that's on you. I do feel though, like he is right. And I think he accepts that attraction can build over time. I do think the most important part of, personally this is, part of, of, of like sexual attraction or attraction in general 
is the way you feel about somebody less their physical appearance i mean th i think that's kind of obvious maybe I mean, maybe some people don't agree with me there but emotionally how invested you are in somebody and how they make you feel and, and your relationship with them is, is way more important than how they look even if they're like a 10 out of 10 doesn't matter i mean a 4 out of 10 that you really get on with is way more attractive than a 9 out of 10 it was just horrible i think we can all agree with that 10 out of 10 though is different let's be honest uh, i'm only joking but uh yeah in all seriousness hopefully these guys just can can get through this i feel bad for your wife now op because she was just pushed into something that maybe she didn't actually want to do and now she's regretting it it's not the greatest situation but yeah as i said get some counseling give it some time I think you'll be all right. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this one. Do not forget, brand new channel, Redditor Extra. I'll leave a subscription button here and I'll leave the video here. Again, don't go commenting down below about the new channel. It's meant to be secret. It's not for people who just click on the episode and then watch two minutes and then leave. It's for you guys that watch the whole thing. If you want more of this sort of content every single day on a brand new channel, check it out.